All right, we are back. We've been on a little bit of delay. You had a big life moment. Yes, I have a lot of stuff, you know? Baby number six. Yeah, I know. Little Congratulations. boy. Yeah. I mean, it's fun time, so. It's... And I act like it was all stuff I had to do. Right, yeah. You know? I'm trying to pretend like I'm I'm so tired and doing No, I'm not. My wife does everything, so. Not that I'm lazy. I She's do things. Saying... I change diapers. I do that stuff. Oh, yeah, but in sure. comparison to... To carrying a child, birthing a child, feeding a child, I, I, I yeah, know, it's not quite it's not even close. Not quite I mean, close. I could change diapers every ten seconds, and it still wouldn't be <laughs> that. So true, but it's fun. So yes, good to be back. Welcome back. Thank you for uh, joining us here across the table. Uh, I'm not even going to bother counting episodes anymore. Who knows what? That's the thing is, we're getting it right. Yeah. We'll, we'll have we're, the episodes on file, moving, but you know, we're, we're getting into a a, a, a groove, we're we're moving and grooving. So. But yeah. yeah, lots of stuff happening though. Lots of lots of stuff. Lots of <laughs> lots of scary stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we might go to war. What do you Could. What do you think about that? It's it's. I mean, in my lifetime, I remember you have like the first uh, like Desert Storm. Yep. Yep. But I that really, no storm. one in America thought, oh no, we're not going to be able to beat Iraq. No one ever thought yep. of that. It was like, no, we're going to, and you know, storming Norman Schwarzkopf and stuff. So, because Cold War to me wasn't a real big thing. I was only like seven years old when it ended, you know, yep. six or seven years old. So to, for me, it wasn't a real, wasn't a reality. And then you had the war on terror. You have 9-11, you have all of this, you have Afghanistan, Iraq. That became a little more real, but it was, it was more of we're going to these far off places to attack these extreme religious, mm -hmm. you know, people. You know, that's what we're doing. People who are taking the Islam to the extreme. I'd say normal, but that, that's a different podcast. But now with, with Russia and Ukraine, that's more, you have this East-West mentality of yep. China and Russia together. You have Ukraine and the, and the West. And it's very, because even, even Russia, like take uh, Vladimir Putin is... You know, goes and lights the candles, goes to church and everything. But at the end of the day, still communism and things like this. Then you had China into that, and it's communism. It's not... Communism has never been a friend to Christianity. Right. I mean, Christianity can thrive in it because Christianity is being persecuted. Mm -hmm. But we have no earthly idea what it means to be persecuted. persecuted here, for sure. No, 100%. And, I mean, yeah. and that's the thing is, maybe that's the next podcast. That's not what we're talking about today. More today is... Is it right to go to war? Mm -hmm. So you always have to look at kind of what, what's causing the war. What, why fight? If you're fighting for dominance and power to lord it over your neighbor, then... Well, because, I mean, as, no. it's, as it's kind of a, a approached at current, is there, there's a border dispute. And, yeah. And Russia's made some advances in the past in taking over parts of Ukraine or Crimea and things like that. And... Uh, it would seem now they, they want more. Right. Um, Russia's defense is that they refuse to allow Ukraine to join NATO. Right. Um, these are big terms, kids. Look them up. Well, the thing is, like we said, we don't want to be political about it. Right? And that's kind of all you're going to hear. You're going to watch CNN, it's all, yeah. it's NBC. Gonna, no matter how you frame it, it's going to be political. All ends up being political. Ultimately, it goes back to war and the question of war. Would, like, if it does come about mm -hmm. that they invade the Ukraine and this massive war breaks out between basically the West and the, you have Russia, China, North Korea, all this, yep. all of that. If that breaks out, what do we as baptized children of God do? Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> you take like World War II. You have this this mentality. And it was even rumors. No, no one could ever prove what was going on with the Holocaust until they saw it with their own eyes. Yep. It's just rumors. But that's not why we went to war. It was because Hitler was killing Jews. Mm -hmm. You know, we went for different reasons. It wasn't Germany that attacked. It was Japan that did. And then we entered war against Germany because they declared war yep. on us. Yes. But, and, but now when we look back at it, we're like, okay, that's why we fought. To free the world from this tyrannical type being. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the thing is... When you look at war in that way, fighting not as some vigilante, 
but fighting on behalf of God, meaning God working through the authority of the government. That can be just, but it's very hard to keep that in mind the whole time because you can develop hatred for the one you're fighting. You can develop um, a vindictiveness. Look at what we did to the Japanese during World War II, putting them in camps, right? You can develop this hatred for your neighbor. So a lot of Christians have been known as pacifists. You know, people that refuse to fight. Mm-hmm. And that, that ends up becoming more of a political thing as well. So the question we have to be asking ourselves is, when you fight, are you fighting as a vessel of God for the weaker brother? Solely for the sake of the weaker brother, or are you not? Is there another motivation here? Is there something else motivating it that, that you don't trust Russians? Or, mm-hmm. or you don't, Because what happens if a war breaks out and all of a sudden Russia is the one in charge of the U.S.? What happens if China... I mean, all these things, these scenarios that could happen, what do we do? And do you, do you fight till the last man, like at the Alamo or something? Every Texan wants to do that. <laughs> but It's ingrained in our being. It's something we have to really contemplate because like Luther wrote, can a soldier be saved? Yes, because he's in his vocation carrying out the sword of the government to punish evildoers. Mm -hmm. So that's the question you have to ask. Are these men, Putin, others, are they evil men or not? And if they are evil men, then you fight against them. It needs to be dealt with. You said something interesting when we were talking before we started recording about the Crusades and how the Crusades started as a just war to protect pilgrims as they went to the holy land and then as time went on right and they the crusades progressed it didn't actually end up being that way you have like the first crusade pope urban the second peter the hermit and, and going to the holy land to protect the pilgrims from muslims but then as the crusades went on you have one crusade when they went through constantinople they sacked it and killed mm-hmm. people eastern christians you yep. know i mean that's the thing is it, it doesn't remain pure because man's heart is concupiscent Corrupted. We have a video short on that word, by the way. You should it's watch concupiscent. it. And that's the thing is it's corrupted. And when we look at war any time, we have to watch out for the corrupt nature of our heart. Right. I could say, well, that man's evil. Why? Well, everyone said he's evil. Everyone's told me he's evil. Okay, well, that's what you're being told by everybody. Is that the case or not? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the question you have to answer first. And I guess I have to have the humility to say, I don't know the answer exactly to that question mm-hmm. because... You look at America right now, are we any better than right, Vladimir Putin? Right, right. You know? I mean, we have a government that's fine with butchering babies in the womb. Mm-hmm. Are we that much different than, than these guys? So that's something to, to focus on and meditate on. But it is can be very scary to think, could the these superpowers that have access to nuclear bombs yes yeah. well, start going off on each other yeah i mean and essentially like we we you grew up at the end of the cold war i i was born right as it ended um but it feels like either a the cold war never ended or b it's restarting and now mm-hmm. we threaten each other and not to get political but i mean we live in this world that where these threats are looming large and i guess yeah. realistically all we can do is is say come lord jesus Right, that's it. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, we live in Houston, one of the biggest cities in the nation. Oh, if Houston gets bombed, we did. Yeah, I mean, if, if they <laughs> sent a bomb to Houston, we'd be toast, yeah. you know? And that's the thing is maybe this, this should drive us into the arms of Christ more. Mm-hmm. Luther said his first thesis, 95 Thesis, is when Christ said repent or preach repent, he called for the entire life of the Christian to be one of repentance. So that reality of repentance is everything that happens in life should be driving you to the arms of Christ. Right. Driving you to Jesus to be in his word. And why not this situation right here is driving us to be in his word. Not to pick up the banner and say, let's fight, let's go after him. But to say, how is this driving me to Christ? And going from there. There we go. So it's fun times. All right. All right, that's a serious topic. We're going to hit another serious topic next week. Uh, We teased out a little bit. Uh, at the beginning of the episode. Join us next week uh, for Theron back again. Uh, Check out all we're doing over at higherthings.org. We'll see you next week. Adios.